Alright, this is my Hobby King Bixler 2 that I just put together and I wanted to make a video about the uh, wing setup I've done. Um, I wanted something fairly complicated. I wanted to um, have flaps, of course, which is actually why I chose the Bixler. I also wanted flapperons, which is when the ailerons um, act as flap extensions laterally. Um, I wanted the entire wing to have uh, flap behavior, um, which on a uh, six servo airplane like this wouldn't be too bad, wouldn't be too difficult, except that I also wanted a um, gyro stabilization. And the problem, of course, uh, for programming that into the controls of the aircraft is that your programming is happening in your radio on the ground and your um, Gyro action, of course, is happening in a controller inside the aircraft. Uh, so it can be... At first, I, I didn't uh, see how I would be able to do that. Uh, but what I ended up doing was um, I used the uh, Hobby King... Um, I think it's the $17 uh, gyroscope they have. Um, it's part of the Orange series. And it does three axis. Um, fairly simple stabilization. There's no head holding um, in the sense that uh, it won't return to an attitude once it's thrown off, but it will resist any movement. It's actually fairly simple, which can be an advantage because um, trim will work fine through the gyroscope. You don't have to worry about um, uh, you know trimming by by some other means. Um, so anyway, uh, the way this works is you have ailerons such as normal, um, and then I have the entire wing set to flaps in the sense that the inboard, uh, the real flaps, um, deflect a certain amount, and then I have the flapperons deflect, but not quite as much. Um, so there's some washout, uh, which the idea there is that if the wing stalls, the center of the wing will stall first and you'll still have, um, hopefully, you'll still have some uh, aileron control. So that's at the center. That's center flaps, um, aileron control, and then with flaps and flapperons, you still have aileron control. And then I also wanted reflex, which is where you, basically the flaps go up and it reduces the amount of lift uh, the wing creates. Um, and the idea there is that if you're going um, if you're going at top speed or high speed, you don't need all the lift the wing is uh, able to create. And in fact, creating its right the, the wing creating its regular amount of lift on, only ends up producing drag beyond the point where you actually need that lift. So if that's center, I can then go up. It's not very much, hopefully you can see it on the video, but if that's center, that's up reflex. And of course the reflex is on both the inner flaps and then the flapperons, or reflexerons, you might you might call them, I guess. Um, now this wouldn't be too hard to program in a radio, except I also wanted gyroscope. Uh, you can see that as I rock the wings, the ailerons resist the motion. And then if I go down to flaps, that resistance is still there. And if I go up to reflex, the resistance is still there. Now that's with the gain turned all the way up on, aileron, on the aileron gyro axis. Normally I wouldn't fly like that, but I just turned the sensitivity up for the sake of showing you um, the roll action there. Now the way I'm able to um, control the flapperons from the radio through a gyroscope where the gyroscope has no flapperon function designed into it is I'm actually using a hardware VTAIL mixer. Um, again from Hobby King, I think it was two or three bucks. Um, and I'm basically, even though I have two ailerons with unique behavior, I'm only using one channel on my radio to control aileron. And then I have a different channel that functions as kind of aileron offset for both ailerons, which at the same time can be thought of two sides of a V-tail. You, you have uh, 
a, a lateral channel and a vertical channel and those two get mixed into a V-tail. I'm using that V-tail mixer to turn an aileron channel and a flap channel into gyroscope stabilized flapper on behavior. And then of course I have the gyroscope working on um, elevator and rudder and that's just simply piping those channels through the gyroscope. There's nothing fancy that needs to be done there. Now unfortunately with this Hobby King uh, just simple V-tail hardware mixer um, there's actually a delay in the controls. Now I am using it in conjunction with the gyroscope which you know those two things together may or may not produce a uh, some kind of interference delay I'm not sure um, but the rudder and the elevator have hopefully you can see they are nearly no delay at least and those are just being piped directly into the uh, gyroscope and then out to the control surfaces the ailerons which are going from the receiver uh, to the gyroscope, then to the VTAIL mixer, then to the servo. If I take the aileron controls here, hopefully you can see there's a delay. I mean, it seems like the uh, refresh rate on the VTAIL mixer is just really low. Like only, I don't know, maybe 5, 10 hertz. When I was testing this on the ground, I was afraid it would have a really adverse effect on uh, just how the plane felt in the air. But when I actually got it up and maidened it, um, it felt fine. I I if I hadn't thought to look for the problem, I wouldn't have felt a uh, problem in the controls. Now, I'm not doing aerobatics. I'm not a 3D pilot. I'm, I'm not a uh, pattern flyer. I'm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for stability out of this plane and I want to use it for FPV. So I'm the wrong person to judge exactly how much delay or lag there is in the controls. Yep, so that's how I have the plane set up at the moment and I've got plans to do even more complex behavior with it in the future. So I'll continue to uh, make video logs of it.